Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru comrades, uh, Uhuru brothers and sisters, fellow comrades, freedom fighters, welcome to the program. Welcome to the program. Uh, I am Tafare Mugeri. Uh, I am the director of organization for the African People's Socialist Party on the Africa, African continent in the Africa region of the International African Revolution under the leadership of Chairman Omali Yeshihela. Comrades, I want to welcome you to the program once again. And the first thing that I want to do is to say to you, down with imperialism, down with neocolonialism, down with the oppressors, down with the whole foul social system, up with the African working class. The colonized mass of the world are rising up. As you can see, comrades, it's everywhere. And then we are just here to say that um, this time, this time we will win. Uh, so I want to call on you, everyone here, to go on and share this life everywhere. Uh, make sure that you call on people to watch because it's going to be a very powerful one. It's going to be a dynamic one because you're going to be hearing from the leadership of the International African Revolution. So I want to welcome you to the program, comrades. And um, the subject today, as uh, you have seen, uh, it's on Niger, comrades. So we are here to say that uh, hands of Niger, hands of Africa. And we are telling this message to France and the whole of imperialism. Again, comrades, we're saying that hands of Niger, hands of Africa. You saw from the footage, the African working class rising up. And today we have the honor of hearing uh, from our chairman, Omali Yeshitela, as well as the secretary general of the African Socialist International, uh, Louise Kinshasa. So comrades, um, uh, we are also anticipating and expecting comrade uh, Ibrahim uh, who is uh, in uh, right there on the ground in Niger? So Africa, go on. Like I said, share the life. Make the, make sure that people are coming through. Uh, make sure that um, 
you know, uh, you get engaged, you tune in, prepare your questions, come with your co comments. We know that everyone is talking about this uh, thing that is happening in, uh, in, in Niger, riding on the wave of anti-French uh, sentiments. People say that to hell with France. We saw that in Mali, uh, we saw that uh, in, uh, in Guinea, uh, you know, we, we saw that in Burkina Faso, and uh, we're seeing it right now, right there in Niger. And comrades, we also saw it in Congo. We saw it everywhere. Everyone is saying that imperialism uh, must go except the neo-colonialist. So what can we say about this? How can we understand this? We want to understand this from the perspective of the African revolutionaries, of African internationalists. And uh, Chairman Omale Shichila is here himself. Secretary General Louis Kinshasa is here himself. So come on, comrades, come on in, tune in, and also engage with the program. We want to hear from you, comrades. We want you to participate because we're saying that the African Revolution will be led by the masses. The African working class will lead the International African Revolution. So we want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear how you're going to participate. So uh, without wasting too much time, comrades, I want to, first of all, uh, you know, like um, uh, bring on our Secretary General, Louise Kinshasa, to come and tell us why we must build the African Socialist International in the midst of what's happening in Niger today. SG Louise, why we must build the African Socialist International. Secretary General, oh, 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 oh. Oh, Director Barry, uh, thank you so much uh, for the introduction and uh, for inviting me to be uh, on this platform. Uh, I want to salute uh, Chairman Amadi uh, as you heard Director Barry saying, the leader, the first the founder and the leader uh, of the African Peace Society Party, of the Uber Movement, in fact, the leader of the ongoing, of the growing African revolution, the worldwide African revolution we're going to talk about today. Uh, <clears throat> As you, you all know, uh, we are right now talking about what's happening in Niger, but we're talking about African people. We're talking about the African nation. And you have to remember from the very beginning, uh, all these names you see, all these countries you see, uh, these are names given to us by our pricer. Just think about it. Just think about the Niger. You know, uh, investigate the meaning of Niger. Uh, it sounds too close to a word, you know, that we've been given, uh, you know, uh, we've been slurred, insulted and things like that. Uh, so basically, we carrying all these kind of uh, nationalities, all, all these uh, false names, false identities we have. But my point here, the struggle in Niger is just the struggle in one front of the worldwide African revolution which means that uh, the interest of all black people, doesn't matter where you are, if you are in the Caribbean, if you are in Europe, if you are in Africa, if you are in, in, in the US or Canada or in the Pacific Island, the future of all of us is being played right there in Niger. It does not mean our future is not being played elsewhere. It's just because the concentration uh, of our struggle it's sharper, the contradiction is very sharp right now in Niger that it forces all Africans, it forces all oppressors. In fact, it forces the whole world to see, to watch, to follow what's going on in Niger, what's going to be the outcome and things like that. But I just want to be clear, it's the future of our African people that's being played at Niger. It's your future, it's my future, it's all of us. So we have to pay attention, understand it, and see what is our role to advance our own interests while we continue to fight wherever we are. But in Niger right now, we have to do whatever we can to move the process forward in the sense that the African revolution becomes alive, the African revolution becomes real, African revolution is understood, and we can make the connection that revolution is the solution, is the only solution. We can do a lot of things, but revolution, unification for Africa is the only cure. Nothing else will do. We can do a lot of things, we can reform this and that, but revolution basically is, is the solution. That's all we're going basically uh, to put our, 
uh, on the agenda? How do we move from where we are? How we with the majority of the people to understand that revolution is the answer? Uh, you heard uh, the uh, comments uh, being made by French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, for example. He said things like he will not tolerate the interest of France being attacked, being threatened. You know, talking about Europe, you are in Africa. What interest Macron has in Africa? Of course, he's talking about uranium. He's talking about electricity produced from uranium that powers all the houses in France. In fact, as you, you, you might know by now, at least 75% of electricity used in France comes from uranium. And uh, Niger produce or provide at least 20% of the uranium used uh, in France, because I've seen many figures. And uh, all of the EU gets 24% of its uranium in Niger. And this is a fundamental question for them. And more than that, and I think that's really important uh, for us to understand why we need to build the African Socialist International, we're talking of the totality of Africa. Now, uranium is in Niger, but Africans are discussing what else is what other country produces uranium in Africa. This has to be also in the mix because our prices, they bring all this information to the mix. That's how they make the move. Namibia is a great producer of uranium. So African people in Namibia, African people in Namibia, we should be doing everything we can to have one production so that when we, we are involved in the struggle, we have one solution because the uranium in Namibia, the uranium in, uh, in Niger do not come uh, to our homes in Africa. As you know, wherever we are in Africa, we don't have access to electricity. In Niger alone, in rural area, and most of us live in a rural area, we have like less than 1% you know, to electricity. Just think about it. Less than 1% of the population in rural area have access to electricity when 75% of homes in France are powered by uranium that we produce. And uh, you also have to know uh, the significance uh, of this uh, uranium. Just quickly, in countries like the United States, they have 91 nuclear reactors. In France, they have 56. Russia has 38. China has got 51. It's building something like 40 more reactors. Japan, 33. Even Korea, South Korea, has 24 reactors. So it's a world event. That's why all the countries, particularly the dominating country, the oppressor countries, they are all watching what's going in Egypt because they can make the link straight away between what they produce, you know, and the, uh, what electricity is being produced in the countries and the, nu and the nuclear. Uh, energy coming from uranium in Africa, Namibia, or uh, Niger, or uh, Gabon, or South Africa, public Algeria also produces uh, some of these uh, uranium. But Namibia and Niger are the biggest producers. So Africans need to be aware of that. There is a connection uh, between that. Now, since we're all clear that France has to go, you saw the video. You've seen uh, probably other news from Mali, from Burkina, everywhere else. Africans clearly have rejected France. Clearly, even in France, discussions are taking place. You know, why are we being rejected from France? You know, so it's not just, it's no longer a question of experts or, you know, uh, something's being discussed by uh, members of the African and People's Social Party or something like that. It's an open discussion in Europe, in France in particular. It's also, as I said, a question being discussed by those who benefit from uranium. But we want to win in Niger. We want to have electricity too in our homes. We want to electrify the whole of Africa. We want France to pay for looting uh, Niger and the rest of Africa. But it's been clear from us, if you read anything we have produced, and I'm going to read something uh, from uh, uh, the work Chairman Omar Shichela has done. For example, I have here One Africa, One Nation. And uh, if you have this book, you can go on page uh, 340, 359, where the Chairman uh, clearly highlight why we need to build the African Socialist International. 
an organization of the African working class around the world to lead our own struggle for power and for the total unification and liberation of Africa. So I'll read uh, from uh, the uh, subtitle, it says, Build the International Party of the African Working Class. We must be clear that the international organization necessary to liberate and unify Africa and our scattered nation is a political party in the form of the African Society International, with one party rooted in the African working class and allied with the poor peasantry, we will have captured the best aspect of the government movement of the, 20, of the 20th century. However, unlike Garvey's UNIA, we will have an organization conscious of itself as a revolutionary instrument in the hands of the African working class. This will also distinguish our organization from such formations as those that have been characterized as fronts, people's organization, congresses, unions, conventions, etc. The Revolutionary Party is one that recognizes itself as an instrument for the achievement of the selfish interests of the African working class. The interests of African workers can only be realized by the defeat of imperial domination in Africa and the liberation and unification of Africa and the oppressed children scattered worldwide. France and other such formations are instruments used in revolutionary movements of the past by the African petit bourgeoisie who needed the energy, militancy, and numerical strength of African workers and peasants who have been the backbone of every liberation effort in Africa and elsewhere. But the African petit bourgeoisie can never afford for the workers and poor peasants to become conscious of our own selfish interests, which can only be realized through total African liberation and unification. So we are clear, struggles are taking place in Africa, as you know, as you can see. But the question is, who is leading? Who must lead toward what end? And we think our end is clear. We want the total liberation and unification of Africa and the leadership of African working class. We want to overturn, we want to remove, we want to end what we refer to as global colonial model production, which basically means that Africans and African nation are colonized forever. We produce not for Africa and African nation, we produce for our prices 24 hours. And that's why we are always poor. So our relationship must be overturned. The colonial mode of production must go, must end. So our struggle for us to be free must go to the end. And the end is what remove and the global colonial mode of production and raise the African working class, the producer of all the wealth produced inside African nations. When I say inside, African nations in Africa is also scattered around the world, like in the US. Is a colony inside the colonizer nation, for example. So is Brazil and other places like that. So we want the African working class from the African nation coming together in one organization and fighting on all fronts. And particularly like in Niger, Niger needs the African nation to be behind them so we can win and raise the flag of African nation, which is the flag of power, the flag of power. And the only black flag of power is going to be the flag of the African nation, you see. So the African Trust International puts the question of revolution. So the workers, the peasants, the, all the dynamic forces in society, all the forces who want to go forward must be one, must be one. The revolution must be one to follow the leadership of, of the African working class must be one to follow the strategy and tactics of the African working class under its advanced attachment, which is the African Socialist International. And this is ongoing struggle. Many people might not have heard of the African People's Socialist Party, which is the name the African Socialist International takes in every single country, but on a planet, on a global level, all the African People, Socialist Party come together to form what we refer to as the African Socialist International. And this is the struggle we're calling for. If we're going to be free, if Africa is going to be free, 
if you're going to be a black dignity anyway, we must achieve power. And if we want to achieve power, then we must make the revolution. And if you want to make the revolution, the whole African nation must participate in every struggle. That's not what is happening so that we can decide how to win because we will pull all our resources together. And remember the defeat of the Black Revolution in the 60s exposed the limitation of our struggles, as the chairman of my often said, exposed the limitation of our struggle being fought in separate fronts, not connected with a single philosophy, single uh, organization, but it was never an evidence of the invisibility of our oppressors. Our oppressors are vulnerable, they are weak, they cannot rule as in all the same way they cannot. We have to be clear on that, they cannot. And it's only our, our ineptitude because we have not yet, we're working on it, we're making progress, we are winning, but we have not reached a decisive, uh, 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 let's say, aspect of it where the African People's Socialist Party is in every region of the planet and we can strike a decisive blow against colonialism as a global mode of production. That's basically our aim. We have not reached that level yet. And that's what the struggle we're making everywhere. That's what the struggle we're making right now. We want to win. We are oppressed as Africans in Niger. We are oppressed as African uh, in Mali. We are oppressed everywhere. And all Africans are rejecting France. That's correct. That's true. We want everybody to move in the same direction. But only, only, in advanced philosophy, only in advanced attachment, led by an advanced philosophy, which will be referred to as African internationalism, can mobilize and can maintain the unity of black people everywhere and around the planet in the same direction until victory. And that is no small thing to have an advanced detachment guided by an advanced theory, or you have an advanced theory guiding an advanced uh, detachment in the name of African Social uh, International. That's where we are. This is the struggle we're making, that if we unite like that, we cannot be defeated. If we unite like that, nobody from any other social force, like African petit bourgeoisie, because African petit bourgeoisie also is oppressed, is dominated. They also want to be emancipated from the traditional colonizers. So any alternative to them is good. So they will grab any alternative you know, that is given to them, but they are not guided by an advanced theory. They are not guided by revolution. They are not guided by the necessity to unite the African nation and the leadership of the African working class. They are not guided by the necessity to overthrow colonialism as a global mode of production, you see. But they are guided by the moment. What's happening now? They want to be free from French imperialism. They want to be free from US imperialism. Some of them want to be free from uh, uh, British imperialism and so on. But we, the African working class, speaking on behalf of the African nation, scattered, dispersed around the planet, we want to end colonialism as a global mode of production. Yes, we want to be free from French colonialism. Yes, we want to be free from British imperialism. Yes, we want to be free uh, from all form of imperialism, but we want to end once for all colonialism as a global model production. We want to end the relationship that exists against our will between the African nation and the global colonialism as a global model production. We want to end that and we want to rise, we want to raise the African working class as a leader of the African nation to its advanced detachment, the African Socialist International. That's what we want to do. And that's what we're fighting for. That's how we we doing everything so that the people can see, they can identify all forms of opportunism, all, all forms of wrong philosophies, wrong practices, wrong ideologies, wrong tactics, and things like that because the African working class must win. And to win, we must be armed with chief, uh, with science, you know, we must be armed with science, you know, and uh, this way we can't be defeated. And that science is African internationalism and the organization that put that in practice, 
that African Socialist International, led by Chairman of uh, the founder and leader of, uh, of uh, the African Socialist International and the whole movement, uh, which, as you know, has come under attack from uh, the, the US state. And you should understand that attack is an attack on African revolution, on African nation, on African struggles everywhere, because he's the one pointing the way. And it's really important that we really understand that in our brain, the African People's Party, Party, generally speaking, we have no borders. And we want everybody who's watching this program also to understand that there is no border within the African nation because our prices do not have borders in the brain. That's why the US has an African plan. That's why Turkey has an African plan. Even Saudi Arabia has an African plan because they just obtained in June a military base uh, in, uh, in Djibouti, you see. So everybody has an African plan, and we are the only one to have African plan. You know, a chorus is not an African plan. That is an opportunist plan for opportunist social force, the African PD bourgeoisie. AU, AU is not an African plan. If you want, is an African PD bourgeoisie betrayal of a genuine African plan proposed by uh, the great uh, Kwame Nkrumah. So AU is not an African plan. On the contrary, if AU is an attack on African nation, you see, because you consolidate the borders and the borders are against the African nation. We are the African nation. Why do you need borders inside the African nation? If they were borders, they should be outside the African nation, outside Africa, you see. So uh, that is really uh, is really fundamental. So we want people just to, to, to really internalize that, that we are African nation, uh, no borders in our brains, uh, we are one revolution, many fronts, and uh, what's African international does unite all the fronts. There is a continuum. As you can see for yourself, in the masses of African people, they have not made the demand yet because it has to be introduced to them. But they can see Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger. It's the same struggle. It's the same people, right? It's the same oppressor. So they should be in immediate call for unification of Africa, starting from these three countries, calling you know, Africans everywhere to unite, to build the African nation and to expel all the oppressors from Africa. You know, there should be calls like, you know, everywhere, you, every week you watch the news, you see African summit with this country, African summit with this country. If there should be African summit, there should be an African summit for reparation so that all Africans can be united to demand France pay reparation to the African nation for looting Africa with the so-called CFA colonial franc. Of course, reparation is no limit to France, Britain or the colonizer or as reparation. But this is some example of uh, application of African uh, internationalism allows us to do. It's allowed to put the African nation struggle in the same direction as strategy and tactics allows every African anywhere, it doesn't matter where you are, you can participate in any struggle for black people anywhere. You don't have, you know, to come from Niger to fight for Niger. You're fighting for African nation. You don't have to come for Haiti uh, to fight for Haiti because Haiti is a part of the African nation and we all involved in the same struggle. The struggle for the redemption of the African nation, for African people, the struggle uh, to recapture our future and the struggle for power, for black power, because there is no struggle really is legitimate if it's no struggle for black power, because it's only power in final analysis that determines if we are free or we are not free. It doesn't matter where we are. It's really the black power that will make the final determination if we are free on this planet or not, if we produce for ourselves or not. You know, this is really critical. And I want to say one more point. Black people, the masses, they love African unity. They love it. And they say, yes, they are Pan-Africanists. We hear that all the time, you know, uh, but we want to just make sure people understand when we say we want unification of Africa, we are not Pan-Africanists. We just want to be clear on that because Pan-Africanism uh, Pan is an expression of the African petty bourgeoisie starting from the time of Garvey, led under the leadership of uh, Dubois, who was a clever man, you know, well-educated scholar, but he represented a small sector of the African petty bourgeoisie that attacked Marcus Garvey 
And the government, Marx governance movement represented the interests of the African nation. They represented the future of the African nation then. And Du Bois teamed up with the United States government to attack Marcus Garvey. You need to check it out. If you've never seen that, you can go to the Banning Spear, you know, when come, uh, you just Google Pan Africans versus African internationalism, you see some uh, articles on that. If we, you, you come through uh, the uh, 60s and we'll remember uh, the Grand Krumah being influenced by people like George Padmore and Du Bois and two, uh, two of these leaders, Padmore and, and Du Bois, attacked Marcus Garvey. And they gave Pan Africanism a practical significance. And they had a lot of influence on Krumah and they defined the strategy that Krumah should take to Africa. And Krumah did. You know, uh, the strategy of uh, uh, parliamentarism. So you need to win seat to the parliament, uh, peaceful uh, uh, a struggle, basically no violent struggle. So no confrontation, no violent struggle with uh, the uh, white colonizer, with the ruling class, basically, because you win power peacefully and you, you know, go through the parliament. Uh, peaceful action. So you, you know, positive action, they used to call it, you mobilize the people like that. And you you know you go to the election and you win and then uh, you you become the prime minister or the president. But the state power stays in the hands of, if not the colonizer directly, but the African people which I see who has been trained by the colonizers to maintain the status quo. And Kruman, so who get people like that? They've been influenced uh, by those uh, you know uh, tactics that Kwame Kruma brought from uh, the Pan Africanists of Padmo and uh, uh, Du Bois. We also saw in, near in Tanzania. Uh, near Tanzania opposed Kuma uh, proposal uh, to build a African Union with one government, one uh, one army, uh, one market, one foreign policy. Uh, basically, we remove all the borders so Africa can act as one one voice, as Marcus Garvey used to do, speak for Africa for one voice. Near with Ufwad Boni, uh, Senghor, and other, but near led the attack. Uh, he, he said we need gradual. African Union step by step, uh, which basically was uh, a way of saying he's opposed to African unity. And Nero himself went, came to Ghana after the death of uh, Kuma, admitted that he was wrong. He said that publicly in the stadium in Ghana. I'm not sure if he was under the leadership of Jerry Rawlings, yeah, then Kuma was correct, you know. But the problem is that Kuma vision basically is a continuity of vision of Garvey, but that vision cannot be implemented by African people bourgeoisie. Just like uh, uh, Gaddafi called for African unity to the same class, he appealed to the same African people bourgeoisie, the president and the prime ministers of Africa. They cannot unify Africa. They are satisfied. Their interests are being satisfied, generally speaking, as a class. With uh, being in powers, uh, being prime ministers, uh, they have access to money or powers and prestige, big palaces in Europe and things like that. So they don't need uh, African unity to advance the interest. The interests have been served already. But the interests of the African people, the African nation, cannot be satisfied through the interest of African petty bourgeoisie. We must end colonialism as a mode of production, and the African working class itself must come to power. So here we betrayed basically. Uh, 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 Kwame Nkrumah, and uh, that's why we they consolidated uh, the borders. Uh, they made the borders uh, unviolable, so you can't violate those borders, and you know things like that. And today, uh, Africa continues to suffer because we don't have an economy. Africa is fragmented. We continue to produce for our oppressors. When there are wars in Africa, Africa doesn't have a, a single army to intervene because different armies represent the interests of African people bourgeoisie. Even when those armies intervene. They intervene with, with the help, with the finance of our colonizers, the EU, the United States, and things like that. That's why ECOWAS can't go to Niger. They have no resource to go to war in Niger because they're waiting probably uh, for the colonizers to fund them. You know, But the point is, African Socialist International is a project of, it's a revolutionary project uh, developed by Chairman of Marichela to complete the revolution of the 60s to continue the project of Marcus Garvey, to carry out the vision of uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, to carry out the vision of Robert Sobuga, Patricia Nkrumah, of Thomas Sankar, all this project are uh, concentrated inside African internationalism, inside the African Socialist International. Uh, that's why I'm calling everyone to understand that 
where we are now, we have to join the African Social International. So victory to Africans in Niger, victory to African nation and black power to African nation or Thank you very much, Mafrika. That was very on point, powerful, and very informative. Uh, so we really appreciate that, Estiluezi. And I, uh, I hope there on the chat, you know, people are writing in their comments, uh, you know, asking the questions uh, and making sure that more and more and more people get access to this. I've been personally sharing on the WhatsApp groups, you know, you know, here in Africa, I don't know, in the US, I know, but also in the Caribbean, WhatsApp is a big thing. A lot of people are talking there on WhatsApp groups. So we want everyone, the entire African nation, uh, to get access to this program today and, uh, and get the way forward. What I appreciate about African internationalism uh, and our leadership is that we are practical. You know, there's always solutions in terms of the way forward. It's not just talking and, uh, you know, like uh, the, just enjoying the conversation. We are here to plan. We are here to bring clarity to what's happening in the real world. So I really appreciate that, uh, S. Julesi. I know that Comrade uh, Ibrahim was supposed to be here just to, you know, uh, let us know about the conditions there in, in Niger. But we know about Niger that it's one of the most poorest countries in the world. And it's because of imperialism that uh, the conditions are that way. You're talking about the issues around illiteracy, uh, you know, a lot of, um, of people in, in Niger, uh, African people, uh, you know, cannot read and write. Uh, you know, children have uh, issues around going to school. A lot of them are forced to, you know, uh, end up having to get married at a very early age, uh, you know, while still teenagers because of the conditions that imperialism has imposed on us. So if you look at Africa uh, as a whole, you look at uh, a country that is, uh, you know, like colonized, I mean, uh, like continent that's, that's, that's colonized. African people as a whole, we exist as colonized, as a colonized nation, uh, you know, so you're just putting it out there as for us to understand uh, what our struggle has been, you know, ever since we were captured, you know, African people have never, 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 never accepted to be totally dominated. We have always resisted. We've always resisted imperialism, as you can see, uh, with the rise of the African working class uh, in Niger and other places. And I do want to say, S.G. Luezi, uh, regarding the French, that they, right now they're talking about democracy, to say that they have to protect democracy. I also want to know what they, they have to say about the fact that they supported uh, the coup in charge. And then they, had to, they said that it was around questions of security. Security for who? For the people, uh, for the interests of African, uh, the African masses, or security for their own assets, uh, you know, like uh, the colonial assets that they are uh, them, uh, the loot, are uh, resources that they have interest in. Is that maybe the question is around that? And right now, there's also a crisis of water in in in, in Niger. A lot of the the water in in Niger is contaminated by the mining of of uranium that takes place there. And actually, uh, even water as a whole is a is is is, is a crisis because people don't even have access to water. Because most of the water goes to what uh, to uh, to the mining process there uh, within Niger that has to do with the uranium. So you find that so the the entire existence of about twenty five uh, million uh, uh, million people a thousand uh, I mean twenty five million people in Niger is based around facilitating the process of taking out our resources in order to give power uh, and electricity to, uh, to 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 France. Almost half of the population in Niger uh, is declared uh, extremely and severely impoverished. And then they're telling us about protecting democracy. What democracy when our people are dying? What democracy are we pro are protecting uh, if our people um, are living under these co uh, conditions while our resources continue to be looted? So we're saying hands off Niger, hands off Africa. And right now, comrades, I just want to move the program forward. Um, we gotta hear more, comrades. Just stick around, share the live, and uh, right now I'm going to introduce uh, the leader of the African nation, who's been in the trenches since the 1960s. Uh, you know the uh, the the theoretician of African internationalism, the author of African internationalism himself, the leader of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omali Yeshitela, Uhuru Chairman. Oh, Africa. 
uh, first of all, I want to express my deepest appreciation to you, Comrade Director Tafari of the African Socialist International of the Africa uh, region of the African Socialist International and, and to Comrade Secretary General Louise Kinshasa uh, for the presentation and the two of you uh, for sharing some of the actual conditions of existence that African people are experiencing and suffering from uh, in Niger and truthfully uh, in Africa as a whole. I want to say that, uh, first of all, that we, we uh, pulled this meeting together really quickly because we felt like it's extremely important to talk about Niger and specifically and how that relates to the struggle of Black people overall, but Niger, uh, the conditions there. We heard the slander that's coming uh, directed toward our people in Niger. And if it's not toward Niger, it's Burkina Faso and Mali now who uh, have uh, said they're going to stand side by side uh, uh, with our brothers and sisters in Niger. And so uh, the French and the US and others are declaring uh, that what has happened is that this, this uh, seizure of power by the military in Niger is an attack on democracy. And that this is something that the entire world should be concerned about. Everybody should be concerned about the loss of democracy. Uh, but what they don't say is that they're talking about a colonial democracy, not democracy that uh, the masses of our people can experience. And the truth of the matter is uh, uh, that uh, what has happened in Niger is that France was overthrown. Uh, at least uh, for the time being, France was overthrown. In Mali, France was overthrown. It's not like the Nigerian people have put together something or the Nigerian people uh, and that we've lost something as a consequence, that the entire construct that we're looking at is France. It's France that's been bleeding in Niger uh, for uranium, for other kinds of resources. And next door uh, to uh, Niger, there's Mali, uh, uh, there's Chad, there are all of these different countries that France has been bleeding. In fact, something like 14 different uh, territories in what they characterize uh, Francophone Spain, uh, um, Francophone Africa, that's, that's France that's done that. That's why the people speak French. Not, it's not an indigenous language. Speak French because the white man, the colonizer came and attacked our Africa. And as a consequence of an attack in our Africa, imposed his rules, his laws. Uh, his uh, uh, demands upon our people. And that's what we've been living on. And even when they construct something that they call a democratic election, it's an election that's constructed uh, in order to facilitate French rule. For example, if you look at what happened in Congo in 1960, when uh, uh, Lumumba was uh, elected and he was elected despite every effort that was made by the Belgians who called it the Belgian Congo, like it was theirs and the people there were theirs. Uh, uh, and, and, and Lumumba succeeded in uniting all of the Africans there, helping them to understand that Belgium is the problem, not different ethnic groups here in Congo. And uh, uh, as a consequence of that, of course, uh, uh, and this is the election democracy that they say they love, uh, but the, what happened was all of them got together and even used the United Nations to overthrow and then kill Lumumba. And similarly, uh, we've seen uh, things like that happen with Nkrumah, who was also not supposed to be elected. They had rigged the election in Congo. They had rigged the election in, in, in Ghana, uh, but nevertheless, Nkrumah and then uh, uh, and nevertheless, uh, uh, Nkrumah and, and Lumumba were both uh, elected. Uh, despite the wills and uh, of the of the of the uh, colonial powers, and they were elected based on uh, the uh, program that was to elevate the conditions of our people uh, uh, in in its relationship with the colonial powers. The objective was to end colonialism forever, in French domination, uh, in Belgium, in uh, the domination of the British uh, uh, in our Africa, and this is what led to their death. There was, there was no uh, uh, cry out when they killed Lumumba that it was an assault on democracy. Uh, uh, there was no outcry uh, when uh, Nkrumah was overthrown at the, uh, under the leadership of the American government, uh, President uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, that it was an assault on democracy. In fact, they gave uh, certain explanations with the case of Lumumba they said it had something to do with Lumumba's turn toward Russians, and he was going—he was a communist, etc. And so that was justifiable. 
In the case of Nkrumah, they said he was an egomaniac. He was somebody who wanted to be over all of Africa because he said Africa must unite, that we have to have a single government. And so uh, they set out to destroy them and they overthrew their governments and murdered them in, 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 in uh, certainly one instance and I suspect in the other instance as well. So this is what we're looking at, this kind of relationship when they talk about democracy, how dare, how can France talk about democracy? Uh, when the fact is that nobody voted for France to come to Africa. There was no democratic uh, determination that these white people from France would come to Africa, would rob us, would loot us, would starve us, anything. Uh, so it has nothing to do with democracy. It has to do uh, with what we call colonialism. It's colonialism is when a foreign and alien force comes and take over your country, your people, your resources, etc. And this is what happened uh, with France. And France... Uh, 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 and this is what happened with most of Europe. This is how Europe became consolidated. This is how white people escaped from starvation uh, through first 600 years ago, a uh, tiny Portugal, backwards Portugal, uh, began this assault on Africa that led uh, to uh, what is now characterized as the, as the slave trade, uh, the trade in black people that created a colonial mode of production so that the whole world is now locked into economic process that's connected to colonialism where a handful of countries around the world dominate everybody else. And then they use our resources uh, to make extraordinary weapons to keep everybody intimidated. And then they hire the politicians, et cetera, who are supposed to be uh, our leaders and put them in power. And if the wrong person gets in power, then they overthrow them and kill them. And most often they use uh, Africans ourselves to do that. That's what Kwame Nkrumah called neo-colonialism. It's a, it, it means new colonialism, but it's the same old colonialism, just got a different face. So the fact is that France has committed horrible offenses. And uh, France, it was France uh, that dominated. Algerians had to rise up and fight against France uh, and to free themselves from this foreigners, these foreigners and aliens who came to our Africa, North Africa and assaulted us. That's how France um, lives. When you look at the conditions of our people in Niger, I was looking at some video footage the other day because there are more than a hundred, more than a thousand US troops there, many more uh, uh, than that there. There are German troops there. What the hell are they doing in Niger? Uh, uh, and they've got at least a, 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 a hundred million dollar facility by the United States there in Niger. And the people are starving there. If you look at the conditions that the people are kept under circumstances just enough to keep them alive so that they can pursue the economic interests and the political interests of a colonial masters. And France, of course, is not alone. France works with the United States, works for the United States and England and the rest of them. So this is, this is what we're looking at, this whole notion that somehow uh, when somebody broke out of the uh, the electoral setup, the rigged elections that's been established by the colonizers, in this instance, the uh, the French, they established this rigged election where you've got a huge uh, military base that uh, with drones that, that are used to kill Africans and other people in the Middle East and throughout Africa, et cetera. By, uh, uh, and this is the U.S. base there. This is not even an, uh, a Nigerian base. This is no U.S. base there. German military forces there. And what are they there? They're not there to protect us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be starving. They say they're there to protect, they're there to fight against some kind of jihadists, some kind of terrorists who are there. But every condition that we find in Africa, people are starving. And people turn to whatever means they can, or whatever solutions they can to deal with the, with the consequences of living under foreign and alien domination and take all our resources, suck all of our resources out. In, in here you have, uh, in Niger, starving people come at uh, Director uh, uh, Tafari just talked about the actual conditions of existence of our people in Niger. Uh, come at uh, uh, Secretary General talked about uh, how all of these resources going uh, from Niger to, uh, to France and, and uh, to other parts of Europe on the one hand. But on the other hand, the people there are starving. Our people there are starving and not just there, uh, throughout the continent of Africa. That's the reality. Anybody's ever flown uh, in an airplane over Africa and you look at the difference in Africa at night. In fact, you can Google it and Google how Africa looks at night and you see it's dark and you check it out as compared to Europe and other places in the world uh, because they have taken everything, continue to take everything 
and it's the condition of their success. So African people starve uh, in Nigeria so they can have sidewalk cafes in France. So in Paris, there are great sidewalk cafes and what have you, great cuisine, et cetera, that they steal from Africa. Uh, uh, and that's the reality that people are fighting against. That's the thing that makes Africans resentful. So they talk about the military coup, and they say it's a coup against democracy, and we're saying it's a coup against France. It's a, it's a military takeover from France. And the final analysis is for the colonized people, the highest expression of democracy is self-determination. That means we don't live under foreign domination. We don't live under French leadership. We don't live under American leadership. We don't live under, under, under British and German leadership. There are German troops there in Nigeria. They can afford to bring all of those, that arsenal, those weapons, et cetera, to kill people and to participate in controlling the rest of Africa. And then you look at the fact that this, this entity that they call ECOWAS, uh, the uh, economic uh, community of uh, West Africa, West African states, you know, they've come out and declared that the, the, the due date has passed now that uh, any, any uh, if the, if the uh, forces uh, did not uh, put back in place the, the, the puppet that the French uh, had there prior to now, that they would militarily intervene uh, into Niger, and uh, which is an extraordinary statement. And so that's coming from ECOWAS. And then you see uh, from the uh, African Union, as it's called, uh, uh, the, the, the president of, Af Af of uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, who presides over the African Union at this moment, at this moment, uh, who making the same kinds of threats. And so what is the president of Nigeria doing? What are all these other forces talking about? And it might be helpful to know that the guy who is the president of uh, uh, Tinubu of, uh, of Nigeria uh, went to school in the United States, went to college in the United States, University of, uh, 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 State, of uh, State University, Chicago State University. Uh, uh, and uh, not only did he do that, but uh, in Nigeria himself, he was employed. employed as a bookkeeper by major American corporations. Uh, his last job uh, was working for uh, one of the major oil corporations uh, 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 there from the United States uh, in Nigeria, Mobile. He worked for Mobile. He's still working for Mobile. <laughs> Today, when he's leading, uh, talking about attacking uh, African people in Nigeria. And uh, if, if it's helpful to talk about uh, getting rid of wrongdoers in Africa. I mean, this guy, even the United States government at a certain time, uh, had charged him uh, with being involved in drugs and tied to a drug forces in Chicago. They, he ended up paying a, 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 at least charged with the fines of, of, a, 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 of maybe $200,000 that he had to pay based on that. This is the guy who was the president of Nigeria. This is the guy who is threatening to intervene uh, in, uh, 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 in Nigeria because the people uh, took a stand to take back uh, our resources. This is part of what it is that we're looking at. It's really important to understand that, that these persons that we are talking about, who they call the president, uh, uh, they don't work for us. They don't work for Africa. They work for themselves and their bosses, their colonial masters. Uh, We've seen uh, 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 in places uh, not too long ago how uh, when the, in Ivory Coast somebody was elected uh, that the French didn't like and they bombed the, the, the presidential palace. They are raided in, in uh, Ivory Coast and, and locked up Bakbo and, and embarrassed him, put him, sent him to court, a white people's court uh, in Europe. Here's France, an organization of killers who killed people in Vietnam to try to control it. I mean, France, I'm right now in a place called St. Louis in the United States of America. Uh, and St. Louis uh, is named for uh, the king of France way back in the day, Louis, King Louis, <clears throat> et cetera. Uh, this is testimony to how France got what it's got and what it's doing, why it's doing what it's doing now to try to keep it, to keep them living well, but it comes at the expense. What happened to the people who lived in this territory they call St. Louis now? Uh, those uh, many of them are dead as a consequence. And how did they, how did how did St. Louis uh, come uh, uh, become an American territory, American-controlled territory? It's because African people in Haiti fought against France. 
fought against France, defeated Napoleon's best troops, and, and made it impossible for the French to be able to defend this territory that they call their own in the United States. At least a third of the United States uh, uh, was grown as a consequence of, 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 of France being forced to sell it to the United States. This is how this whole system came into being, what makes it work, why they are so desperate, why all of them are coming together and saying that we have to do something about Niger. This is uh, why you've got these puppet regimes who would work hand in glove and would carry out the mission of the colonial white power uh, to attack uh, the government in Niger that exists there now. They say, well, you know, it's not legitimate because they, they didn't win an election. But you see the legitimacy of it because you see masses of people in the streets and they are attacking us. Streets uh, is, a, is, a, is the wrong way to characterize it because they are dirt roads mostly. That's how infrastructure happens. That's how it doesn't happen in places where the colonizer controls us, whether that's in Niger, whether that's uh, 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 in Sierra Leone, uh, in West Africa, whether that's in uh, 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 North uh, St. Louis, in the United States of America, they, they, there are, there is no real infrastructure to speak of in our communities. And so you saw the mass of the people, you're talking about a Democrat, a, a statement, mass democratic statement of the people, they attacked the French embassy, they are cheering. And you see the pictures that they show when they show their own media, they show masses of people cheering. And if anything, what the military did was they rode on the wave of resentment by the masses of African people for, for, for French colonialism, what France does to us, what colonialism does to us as a people. That's a democratic expression. You will never see a, a greater democratic expression than that. So uh, this, is, this is what we are talking about. When they're talking about democracy being overturned, we're saying that the highest expression of democracy is self-determination. The highest expression of democracy is France out of Africa. The highest expression of democracy is African people being in charge of our own resources, our own life, that we are self-determining and not living under colonial domination. That's the highest expression of democracy. You can't get better than that. So how can you call it democracy? when you have these neo-colonial puppets who work for the colonial masters and not for the masters of our people. So we're not, we're not fooled or bamboozled by these kinds of uh, characterizations. So I think it's really important to say that, that, uh, that, uh, that France has committed horrendous offenses and does so today, not just in Niger, but all over Africa and every place where Africans are having to turn over every territory, uh, more than 65% of their, of, of their of, uh, of foreign investment, they come from their banks, more than 65% rather uh, of their assets, their GDP goes directly to French banks. And then France charges them. Those banks' interest for keeping the money that they took. And then that means that the, the countries like Niger won't have enough resources to take care of themselves. So how do they get resources to feed and pay people, et cetera? They have to borrow the money. They have to borrow their own money from France, which charges interest for that as well. That's the relationship that we are talking about existing and that has to be destroyed. So we're not, we're not, we're not fooled by this nonsense that they are putting forward here. And the thing is that the whole world is locked into this, this very parasitic uh, colonial mode of production where all of life, everything that people have to do to, to, to make life, to feed, clothe, house ourselves, uh, uh, all of the ideas surrounding and flowing from this process of feeding, clothing, and housing ourselves, uh, all of this is a, a parasitic connection that has been imposed upon us in the world. The world economy as it exists today came about as a consequence of an attack on Africa. And Africa is central to every discussion that's being had and that's happening right now. And this whole thing about trying to maintain the colonial mode of production is responsible not only for what they're doing in Niger and what they would do in Africa, et cetera, but other places around the world. But specific to Niger, Niger right now, specific to Africa, 
I think what is really important to understand, uh, for example, I'm sorry that Comrade uh, Hamadou uh, 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 is not uh, 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 with us uh, in this because he is a trade union organizer there in the GIA. And uh, the, there's no electricity, as you know, in the GIA because the Nigerians turned it off. Uh, uh, but the, this, it's really important that uh, he reported in a meeting that uh, we attended uh, maybe two or three days ago, that there are Africans, uh, uh, certainly ethnics uh, in Nigeria, who said that uh, no troops, no ECOWAS troops are going to come through their area of the territory in, in Nigeria to attack Nigeria. And then we've seen that there are uh, other states, uh, these artificially created states, Mali, uh, 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 and, and others who's, who've united uh, Burkina Faso, united <clears throat> with Nigeria, <laughs> and others in many ways have not so directly uh, 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 indicating they're going to do so. Even the so-called African Union uh, does, is not solidly united around this attack on Nigeria. And if they go in Nigeria, like they are talking about, uh, they are going to unleash some things. People say, well, what's going to happen? Who's going to win? Well, I tell you, what's going to happen is they're going to unleash the passions of masses of African people throughout that region and throughout the African world. Because once this happens, Africans throughout this region are going to rise up. There's no doubt about it. If they're rising up in Nigeria now, what are they going to do uh, in Mali? And what are they going to do in and uh, 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 and other places uh, in Africa and in Algeria and all these other places, what are they going to do when 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 they attack? And I'm telling you that you're going to see uh, uh, people rising up and even in, against their own local puppet governments there. And the same thing is true of Nigeria. Nigeria is just created, uh, put together patchwork, just like most of what they characterize as African countries and territories. It's not going to be able to survive uh, again. And you know, this time uh, in history, a struggle of African people now uh, having to defend uh, our interests in Nigeria as it's interpreted. Uh, that's not going to. That's not going to be a success. We're going to see a. We are seeing a fracturing of this established arrangement that they put together. They put this together in 1884 and 85. They created this false entity. These so-called separate countries so-called separate identities, et cetera. 1884 and 85, they pulled it together. Then in 1963, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, as you know, uh, uh, the, they pulled together uh, under, uh, uh, in an attempt to keep Nkrumah's efforts to unite all of Africa, they pulled together this entity they call it, or Organization of African Union, to unity, to consolidate uh, these separate borders and what have you. All this stuff is threatened right now. It's threatened right now because of the obvious betrayal uh, that these heads of states are making against uh, of the interests of our people on the continent of Africa. And we see a similar thing happening throughout the world. It's happening within the United States. Uh, people who uh, have elected offices, et cetera, uh, who betray Africa. A, 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 a congressperson in the United States who went and had a measure passed uh, uh, in the House of Representatives uh, that talked about the malign forces of, of Russia in Africa and any African country that does not go along with what the United States says should be going, happening around Ukraine uh, should be punished because of that. And anybody in what they characterize as diaspora, which means me and other people, should be punished as well. Africa is a central question. It is central to the entire colonial edifice, even if most Africans don't understand it and have been taught uh, to not believe in our significance as people. Africa is central. That's why the United States government uh, created, uh, a, a, uh, for the first time in its history, a former Black general, African general, <clears throat> and made him head of the Department of Defense. That's why, for the first time in the 246-year history, of the Marine Corps, they made an African a four-star general and then put him over Africa uh, with the responsibility of controlling Africa, controlling Africa from Africans and controlling Africa, Africa uh, 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 from uh, Russian and, and, uh, and Chinese influence. That's why they're there. Uh, that's why for the first time in history, uh, the United States took an African 
uh, and uh, general uh, from the Air Force. So you got the United States Army and with Lloyd Austin, who is the guy who is the, uh, over the Department of Defense. You've got the Marine Corps uh, uh, with Langley. And, uh, uh, and then you've got the, the Air Force. <laughs> also, they made this guy head of the, uh, this is Austin. They made uh, uh, Langley uh, uh, from the Air Force, rather, the guy from the Air Force general, they made him head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So all of the military apparatus in the United States, <laughs> formerly uh, under the black faces, the black faces are over all of that. That's why you see, they had to send, they sent African troops, black faces. Uh, when you look at Niger, uh, the American troops there, the troops who are fighting for America there, the troops that are the, among the 1,200 that they admit they have there, Africans are the majority. You see pictures of Africans. And so given an opportunity, the colonizers will not fight uh, the colonizer. The colonizer will use the colonized to fight the colonizer. And that's what we see in Niger. Not just what ECOWAS is willing to do, not just what uh, they are willing to do out of the so-called African Union, uh, but the fact of the matter is Niger itself is a creature of France, a creature of colonialism that was created for the purpose of working against the interests of African people in Niger. And so all of this apparatus works against us. And that's why we have to be organized and we have to build the African Socialist International. Join this organization. Uh, uh, there is no future except uh, the future that we create for ourselves. I've seen the people who cheer Russia and carry the Russian flags. I've seen uh, people who attended the uh, Russia-Africa uh, summit uh, that just happened uh, on 27th and the 28th of uh, July. Uh, uh, in St. Petersburg, Russia. And I understand why people would see Russia uh, uh, as friendlier to our interests uh, based on its history uh, uh, than France. Uh, and then uh, most of uh, what we see uh, coming from the former colonial powers. That's understandable. You can see that. And you understand also that uh, Russia uh, may have its own interest in, in, in uh, uh, challenging the hegemony of, uh, of the traditional colonial powers, understand that. But what we must also understand, even as we can accept, even as people on the continent of Africa, even as people who are struggling uh, to change our circumstances uh, in the world uh, can accept friendship from anybody. Uh, the thing that we must recognize is that we are our own liberators and that we uh, have to have a capacity of our own we have to say we are fighting for one Africa, one nation, uh, because what the colonizer has done uh, is that they have scattered the African revolution around the world. So uh, there are 54 different Africas today. Uh, there are the Africa that's in Haiti, that's African Jamaica, that's African Cuba, that's Africa that's been spread all around the world. We are everywhere. Uh, and to the extent that we become consciousness that we are one Africa uh, with a common interest to overturn this colonial relationship, then we can go and, and, and choose friends. We can go and, and choose allies, uh, uh, not new puppeteers, not new masters uh, ourselves. And you can't do that unless you have a one Africa. And then if you understand this, then you know that the imperialists understand this. And you know that this is why the United States government, the things I've told you now, uh, you understand that this is why the United States government in, a, in to make sure uh, that the colonial powers continue to control our Africa would attack the African People's Socialist Party in the United States. It's an assault on Africa that they made on July 29th, uh, 2022, uh, when they attacked my home. And uh, when they came with armored vehicles, when they came with uh, assault weapons, when they used drones, when they used uh, 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 stun guns and uh, bombs and, uh, 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 and things like grenades, and things like that against us. It was Africa that was under assault because for the first time since Garvey, as a consequence of what the African People's Socialist Party is doing, characterized as the African Socialist International, so that Africa now can speak with one voice. We are in, in, in West Africa. We are in South Africa. We are in the Caribbean. We are in the United States. We are in Europe as Africans. Our mission is one strategic mission for the absolute, total, unconditioned, unequivocal liberation of Africa 
and the unification of African, African, African people around the world. That's what it's about. So no matter where we are, that's the objective that we are fighting for. And this is one reason the United States government would have to attack us. Because even as we talk about having arrangements or relationships with any force in the world, the fact of the matter is that we have to be able to speak as one Africa. One Africa. We have to have, be able to speak as one Africa looking out for African interests because we cannot solve our problem one Nigeria at a time. We cannot solve our problem as we've learned one Lumumba at a time. We cannot solve our problem one Sankara at a time, one Nkrumah uh, as a at a time, uh, one Malcolm X at a time. We have to build uh, a movement that connects the entire African revolutionary project. Uh, and this is, this is what we're struggling for. So I'm saying that this is why they attack the African People's Socialist Party, because we provide uh, this process of connecting Africa on a common strategic mission for the total and absolute uh, liberation and unification of Africa and African people. We, the strategic mission, this is what the struggle has to be about. And if it's not about that, what you will find is people find themselves selling out for this group or that group. Uh, I'm selling out now for, for uh, Niger or, or Nigeria or Cameroon or something. This is how they would have us working. I can solve my problem if I work with the imperialists against this other entity, but one Africa, so that we understand that Niger is the Nigerian front of the African revolution. That St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm located, is the US front of the African revolution. That the African People's Socialist Party there uh, in South Africa is the South African front of the African revolution. We are one Africa, one nation. And we have the advantage now of them having dispersed the African nation around the world. And as we now achieve consciousness and organization and, and the advantage of revolutionary scientific theory, then we can have a united struggle that will mean the doom of a social system based on parasitism, slavery, uh, uh, and ex extreme genocide expropriation of the value of value from, uh, uh, from all of our people. So Uhuru comrades, go to uh, handsoffuhuru.org. Go to handsoffuhuru.org. This is, will get you to the Hands Off Uhuru, Hands Off Africa website. Uh, so please take a look at that. And thank you, comrade uh, Tafari, uh, Uhuru Africa. <clears throat> Uhuru, Uhuru Chairman, Uhuru, uh, thank you very much, Mafrika. We really appreciate that. And uh, I, I hope, uh, you know, I was on, on the Facebook there just checking out what's happening. And I'm seeing that, you know, the comrades commenting there, saluting your leadership there, you know, the powerful statement that you're just giving up, uh, I mean, out uh, here on this program. And just the consistency, Chairman, you know, the struggle continues. Uh, we're still on the same trajectory. Yeah, the, the emphasis you're making on the fact that we have to build one revolutionary movement across the world. You know, it, the same struggle is not different, uh, you know, revolutions all over the place, but it's one African revolution. That's one thing that uh, you really are you not know, like bringing our minds to because there are people who are assuming that, because even in Niger, there, there's, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, there's this thing that they're referring to as the, you know, defense of the homeland or something, you know recognizing Niger as, as the homeland. But then we, we say that the whole Africa belongs to all African people, those at home and those abroad. So wherever you are in the world, you have to have an interest in, in what's happening in Niger. You must have an interest in what's happening in South Africa, have an interest in, in what's happening in, in the United States, because the dispersal of the African nation uh, was also you know, part and parcel of really weakening us as, as African people. So I just wanna, you know, express appreciation again, uh, Chairman, uh, you know, for that breakdown, clarifying things for us as usual, and also as Luezi, you know, just everything you said. I also wanna uh, say, Comrades Mafrika, that regarding Comrade Ibrahim uh, Hamadou, who is in, in Niger, he wanted to be here by all means, but then, as you know, part of what uh, imperialism is doing through this ECOWAS uh, entity is really, uh, you know, trying to cripple uh, you know, the, the people in, uh, in Niger by power cuts because uh, Niger depends on a power supply, a supply of, of, of electricity that comes 
via Nigeria, you know. Um, so so that's that's what imperialism does. And right now, uh, ECOWAS uh, actually had declared yesterday that the deadline for the reinstating of the president in Niger was supposed to be yesterday. So anything can happen, comrades. And imperialism is really putting pressure, lots of pressure on the puppets in Africa, on all the neocolonialists, in order for them to safeguard their interests. Right now, even now speaking of Russia, Chairman, in South Africa, there's going to be a BRICS summit, uh, you know, uh, this month. And, um, you know, uh, the president of Russia was supposed to come here, but then because of the pressure from the West, uh, from, uh, you know, imperialism, uh, you know, the, the, the South African president uh, really was, you know, like uh, encouraging uh, Putin not to come here physically and participate virtually or by other means. So they always pull the strings, you know, imperialism wants to pull the strings, but they can only succeed if, you know, the petty bourgeoisie is still at the helm. But with the African working class, we have to rise. We've seen the masses, uh, you know, attempting to rise everywhere. So comrades, I uh, just want to call on you to join uh, the Uhuru movement, join the African People's Socialist Party. You can go to the APSPUhuru.org, APSPUhuru.org in order for you to participate in the revolution. And also, like it has been mentioned, uh, the chairman of Mali Ashitela, as well as the Uhuru movement is being at, is under attack, you know, by the FBI. The chairman has just been indict, in, indicted alongside uh, Comrade Penny Hess and Jesse Neville. So you can support that movement. Here it is, it's the Hands of Uhuru, Hands of Africa campaign. Go to Hands of uh, Uhuru. Dot org and in order for you to get all the information that you need. This is part and parcel of the whole attack that France is making in Africa, that France is making all over uh, you know, its colonies, that the US is making uh, in, in Africa. You talk about military, military bases, AFRICOM, you're talking about everything is connected, comrades. Nothing is isolated. It's a whole global imperialist economy uh, that has dispersed us all over the world and continues to exploit and oppress us as African people. I don't know, comrades, I'm about to go to the final announcements, but I really do wanna uh, just, if there's anything from you, SG Luezi, maybe final remarks or anything that you wanna put out there, uh, you know, uh, for our benefit and also the chairman as well. Uhur SG Luezi. Is SG Luezi still there? Yeah, so I'm saying I, I, I was just struggling to unmute and uh, and uh, start the video uh, again. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, uh, Director Fari. Uh, thank you, Chairman, uh, for your relentless leadership. Uh, everything you said uh, is definitely clear uh, for everyone who just watched this program. And uh, we just want to reiterate that uh, we are living in a historical time. Uh, the world is changing. And the African Socialist International is the only vehicle that is there for the African uh, nation, for the African working class, all the impoverished Africans around the world to be part of history, to change the world in our own terms. That's the only vehicle we have. And that's why I unite with the call you make, wherever you are, you should join today. Unite with uh, the call uh, we make. It's our time, late seas, uh, you know, uh, the time and make history and uh, change the world and uh, unite the African nation and end this uh, colonialism as a global mode of production because it doesn't have anything for us. Wherever we are, it's pains, it's, uh, you know, um, I was listening to your presentation, just the statistics, and it reminded me in Niger, the uh, scholarization, the length of scholarization so the average length of scholarization is two years. Two years, you know, for most of our children, there will not be school anymore. And at the same time, we create wealth. EDF, the company that makes electricity in France, employs 165,000 people. Just think about that. How many Africans uh, can't see the future in EJ? Most of us. So mm. join the African Social International and uh, end this system of global of colonialism as a monopoly action. It's our time. 
We're not going back. We're not retreating. Let's go forward. Join today. Uhuru. Uhuru, can I just say that also on top of that, because, you know, you know, the steps that you're giving us there and just reminding us of the conditions. This is a lot of people are ignorant about this, you know. Uh, you know, the, like people are ignorant and it's because of imperialism doesn't want us to know about this stuff. And, uh, you know, because it's not always on the news. It's not there on social media. So a lot of this stuff is hidden from the people that especially are centered in the, uh, are within the centers of, of, of the, imp the imperialist centers and so forth, right? Uh, I, I want to say that it, the African Socialist International is building right now. It has been building. In, in West Africa, in Ghana, we have organization there. In, uh, in Sierra Leone, we have organization in Sierra Leone. Uh, we have organization in Liberia, in Nigeria. The, we actually got a, even a new contact in Nigeria just uh, yesterday. So we, we, we're there in, um, in, in Niger through Comrade uh, Ibrahim, uh, you know, uh, uh, Comrade Ibrahim Hamadou, he, he's there, he's in, um, uh, in Niger. You know, we're here in South Africa, Namibia, uh, Swaziland, Zambia, you know, we, we everywhere, we're building the African Socialist International is already in motion. So we're just calling on everyone to come and join in so that we can build this movement. We can already see that it's possible. We just have to make it happen. So that's what I want to say, Estudwezi. And also, you know, bring on uh, the chairman, Omali Shitela, you know, for, for any final remarks from Africa. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you. Thank you, Kamran. I want to just express appreciation to you, uh, Kamran, Director uh, Tafari, and uh, Secretary General uh, Luezi. Kinshasa for uh, your participation and leadership you brought to this discussion. And I also uh, want to express appreciation to uh, all of you, all of you who've come on to this discussion. It's a really uh, important uh, discussion. And I think that uh, people are being asked in different places around the world uh, that if you have the ability to do so, that you should be holding demonstrations at French embassies protesting France's uh, involvement in Nigeria. I agree with that. And uh, uh, there may be other means by which you can protest, uh, including uh, economic uh, 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 boycott of French goods that you find uh, uh, in your shops and things like that. I agree with that. And you might do it beyond uh, that. You may be, uh, you should be demanding that all foreign troops out of Africa, all of them, every one of them uh, should leave Africa. And if there are embassies of governments and uh, that you know uh, ha have uh, troops in Africa, whether that's the United States, uh, whether that's Germany, whether that's uh, uh, France, et cetera, I think that you know we should have protests. Let the world needs to see Africa and express in our opposition and rec our recognition uh, that we engage in one struggle. And uh, which should be relatively easy to understand. I mean, you have Africans who say that we can't work together because we got all these different countries, but France is one country and it controls, I don't know how many African countries. That's yeah. what the struggle is all about. It doesn't make any sense at all. Also, uh, I think what's really important and people have talked about down with AFRICOM, that, that AFRICOM can be protested in the various places where we are located. Uh, uh, this military entity that the United States uh, uh, has imposed on, on the whole continent of Africa for the purpose of controlling Africa. And, 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 you know, that's not unrelated to NATO, you know, like all these military forces, but particularly when we look at AFRICOM, I think it's important. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, the thing that I would say is that we are fighting for African agency. So we want everybody to say, yeah, you know, down with AFRICOM and, you know, you know, France should get out, uh, et cetera. But we have to build a, a capacity as African people uh, to take power over our own lives because you can only protest for so long. We've seen that over and over again. You can exhaust the people with just protest after protest after protest. That's why we talk about building revolutionary organizations and committed to the long view. And people shouldn't be frightened by the idea of revolutionary organization. I'm talking about revolution, we are talking about the fact is that the existing social order has to go, that Africa has to be a self-governing uh, country. We're talking about African people having power over our own lives. And we can only do this collectively. 
And so the African Socialist International is what we're talking about, one. Second, we're not just talking about uh, 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 an anti-colonial movement uh, onto itself. We're talking about an anti-colonial movement that will, achieve, will receive the leadership of the African working class. Otherwise, we'll do what we've done over and over again, where we've seen uh, uh, so-called independence achieved. Uh, and there are other social forces. I mean, I've looked at some of the struggles uh, in the past and uh, where we were supposed to have independence. And now people are begging for the white man to come back because the oppression and exploitation has grown even worse because there was no, there was the African petty bourgeoisie uh, who, who can fight for his own interests, can fight for his kith and kin, can fight for his in-laws and what have you, but cannot fight for the African nation. And so uh, only the African working class, only the African working class connected to the poor peasantry, the ones who you see uh, in these videos uh, trudging uh, down these dirt paths, in most instances uh, filled with rainwater and other uh, disease carrying uh, uh, facilities. Only the African working class and the poor peasantry uh, have an interest in overturning this relationship. And so uh, we have to be in the mix uh, when we start talking about uniting Africa, building a united capacity against colonialism. It's going to have to ultimately be under the leadership of the African working classes, which is why uh, there has to be this instrument in the possession of the African working class, which is why there is. That's called the African Socialist International. So this is extremely important. And uh, uh Right now, uh, uh, the imperial powers, the colonizers are on the back foot. Uh, they're living in a desperate state of existence, uh, which doesn't mean they're not dangerous. They are. They lash out, and but they've been dangerous before. This time, the basis of their being dangerous is because of the growing success of our struggle, because of the growing consciousness of African people, because the fact is that colonialism is being experienced and recognized uh, as something that works against the interests of all humanity and especially against Africa and the working people. So thank you, uh, Comrade uh, Tafari. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman. Uhuru, Uhuru. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade. And, uh, you know, I just want to, you know, thank you especially for expressing your confidence in the people, you know, in the African working class, you know, because that, that's what it's about, you know, uh, the African working class, the class doesn't believe in itself. And, uh, you know, certainly the petty bourgeoisie do not believe in us. <clears throat> so really, uh, we just ap appreciate, uh, you know, the, that, that confidence and we will build to win. And, uh, you know, speaking of, of that, we're calling on everyone again to build the African Socialist International. That is the call right now from Chairman Omali Chela and the entire African People's Socialist Party. Build the African Socialist International by simply going to apsp.org apspuhuru.org and then fill in the, 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 the joining membership form there. And also uh, build the hands of Uhuru front wherever you are. We are building the hands of Uhuru coalition right now, comrades. So go to handsofuhuru.org. You'll get all the information you need to, um, uh, to know about this uh, whole attack by the FBI, the federal government of the United States against the leadership of the African revolution. You can, or you can join and become a volunteer, and then you can also join uh, through your donations. Like it has been said already, make your, 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 your resources, your money, your donation much for you if you can't go to where? To the November 4th March on Washington. So on the 4th of November, we're going to be marching on Washington, comrades. I'm here in South Africa, and I'm going to be marching to Washington as well. Why? Because we're going to be going to the US Embassy in Pretoria. So wherever you are, comrades, March on Washington on the 4th of November. Uh, there will be a march right there in the United States in Washington, D.C. Uh, you can register for this as well, comrades. If you go to handsofuhuru.org, I'm sure there is another link, uh, you know, specific for, for the registration of this march uh, on Washington that is, uh, you know, sponsored by the Black is Back Coalition uh, for, for, for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations. So join this March on Washington on the 4th of November. So the flyer is out, comrades. Go to the hands of org or go to the Black is Back Coalition. And also, Africa on Thursday, uh, go to the African People's Socialist Party, Africa Region Facebook page. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find there the weekly webinar that takes place around this hands-off campaign. 
and uh, also on Sundays, uh, catch up on our Chairman Omali Ishitela weekly program studies. Omali taught me uh, at, uh, that is at um, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, right? 8 a.m. Eastern time, that's 3 p.m. Central African time. So, Uhuru.